You're listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, go to nakedbiblepodcast.com and click on the support link in the upper right-hand corner. If you're new to the podcast and Dr. Hyder's approach to the Bible, click on New Start Here at nakedbiblepodcast.com. Welcome to the Naked Bible Podcast, episode 190, SBL Conference Interviews, part one. I'm the layman, Trey Strickland. He's a scholar, Dr. Michael Heiser. Hey, Mike, how are you? Good. Well, here we are. We are in Boston. That means we are not in Rhode Island anymore, right. teardrop, but uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan bad. of Boston. This is my second time in the great city of Boston. Everything's green, Celtics, the land of... And the Red Sox. Don't Bruins forget the Red Sox. And the Red Sox, Sox yeah. and... And you you may take a tour of Fidway. Yeah, that, that's one of my goals, to slip away for an hour and tour Fenway Park. So That'll be neat. Yeah, it will be. It's just something I've always wanted to see. So, you know, Lord willing, I'll get to do that. Now, in our first round here, uh, we have some you know, good interviews, obviously. Uh, we're going to talk with David Burnett and catching up with David. David is familiar to the podcast audience. Again, we've had him on as a guest. Um, people are familiar with him and his work. So he is well into his first semester of doctoral work at Marquette. So for sure, we're going to ask him about that, how it's going, and what his, you know, what he's doing in terms of research, what he's thinking about. And then we want to talk to Marina Westerdahl. Marina is a uh, beginning doctoral student. She's applying for doctoral programs now. She has several options. Uh, I, I met her at Knox Seminary when I taught an interterm course on uh, really the Unseen Realm content. We use that as a textbook. Uh, Knox is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but uh, she was uh, a mom, had a couple of kids, decided, I want to go to seminary. And again, we met there and now she's, you know, applying for doctoral work. So we wanted to talk with her about her experience and again, some of the things that are really interesting her in terms of content. And then finally, Sam Lamerson on this episode. Sam, again, we interviewed uh, last year as well. Uh, Sam is a New Testament professor at Knox there in Fort Lauderdale. And some of you may recall that Sam is also sort of a fellow traveler uh, with some interest in uh, paranormal topics. And he has something that I think you're going to get a kick out of uh, that he d- actually did uh, in Fort Lauderdale with you know, his own uh, audience to sort of uh, you know, get, get them interested in, in why Christians should think about that sort of stuff. And we want to talk to him about that. So another good round of interviews uh, here at SBL. Well, we're back at SPL, and guess who we ran into? <laughs> it, it's David Burnett. Hey there. So obviously, lots of people on the podcast are familiar with you, David. So why don't you give us a, an update on what have you been doing? <laughs> Starting my doctorate at Marquette University, drowning in work. <laughs> okay, so what, what are the classes you have? Just, okay. just give us the classes. So I'm doing three seminars right now. One... Judaism in the Hellenistic World with Joshua Burns. Mm -hmm. I'm doing Advanced Hebrew with Deidre Dempsey. Mm -hmm. And then I'm doing uh, Origins of Trinitarianism to Augustine um, with Michelle Barnes. Oh, wow. Boy, that that sounds like the place to be. So, okay, I got to ask you a few questions here. All right. Mm -hmm. For our audience, explain what happens in a seminar. So in a seminar, um, you read to your eyes fall out um, (laughs) an absurd amount of literature uh, so a lot of primary sources and then a lot of secondary literature as well. Uh, a lot of articles, books. Um, uh, so you read the material and then you come to class uh, ex- expected to have read it all. And you're discussing it. And a lot of the sort of lectures and discussions center around the reading. Um, and then you'll have major term papers in those courses, um, article reviews, things like that. So uh, a lot of work. Um, more pages than you could physically read probably. Sure. But, um, you know, you, you, yeah, you just, you just do the best you can. Yeah. We can, we kind of joke that, you know, if we didn't love this stuff, we would kill ourselves. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, that, yeah, you know. that, that, that brings back memories actually. Yeah. Um, what, what, what are you using for advanced Hebrew? Do you have a, you have to read through an advanced um, grammar or are you doing something else? Actually we do a lot of translation. So it assumes that we've had like two years of Hebrew or so, okay. but she, we often refer to, uh, 
um, let's see. Well, we've referred to a number of different grammars. Sort of Juan Maroka, Maroka, yeah, Walt um, O'Connor. Yeah, yeah. Maroka is a is one we've referred to quite frequently. But it's it's a foc- It's focusing in on the Psalms. Mm-hmm. So we do uh, translations of Psalms every week. Um, so one to two Psalms will translate a week, and and uh, it's a it's actually a, a split class um, because we have a smaller uh, pool of graduate students at Marquette. Uh, and so half the class is a Psalms class only that mm-hmm. doesn't need Hebrew. And then the other half of the class, advanced Hebrew, is doing all the translation. Yeah, work e- for the each class. one has their own set of requirements. Right, and all that. right. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we did that too at Wisconsin. Yeah, so that's that's what we're doing. And yeah. uh, it's fun. It's And yeah. Dr. Dempsey's amazing. Uh, she's, yeah, she's incredible. So, you know, I, I the, the name of one of my novel characters, I have to admit, actually comes from her. Really? Yes, it does. No way. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. What? What? Did you gotta. I just you can't I leave me read, hanging there. No, what, what's I, that well, about? I, I read an article or or two by her on something when and I was writing the my first novel and I just liked the name so. <laughs> That's what I did. Okay, now now the whole world knows this. I'm <laughs> right. totally gonna tell her this. Well, go ahead. This you is can great. Tell her. You can tell her. That's I great. Just, yeah. Yeah. Got to get names somewhere. <laughs> you, you can't just name it after your kids. You, hey, you're in you my buddy Mike's novel. Did you, you know that? Well, then you can't like kill anybody off, you know. So oh, you kill so, her off in the book? No, she's still alive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my goodness, she's alive after two installments. But hey, Doctor Dempsey, good news: you're not killed <laughs> off in this book that you're in that you don't know about. <laughs> no, I I just like the name. So nice, yeah. nice. All right. So how has have you adjusted to life at Marquette? Okay. Cause you went from Texas yeah, <laughs> and now you're in Wisconsin. Yeah. Talk about a transition. Um, but I haven't felt the bulk of the transition yet. You know, well, we're not in you, the deep of you, winter. You never go outside. Is that- <laughs> no, I mean like I'm okay with the thirties. Like it yeah. actually feels really good. Oh you know? you, yeah. Just you wait. Yeah. I mean like you can wear sweaters and stuff and it's, it's great. I like that part is cool. Like as long as it stayed in the thirties, I'm good. Now the the coldest it's got so far was like it got twenty five or something mm-hmm. one day, and that just, was it that, was kind of cold. That but is, I was like, no oh, pun not intended. That bad. That's a warm up. Okay, right. I know. I know. Yeah, I literally know. Everyone tells me about it. You know, I heard about the polar vortex about like five years ago or something. And so I, everyone's told me all the horror stories. It's funny though. Like when I moved to Wisconsin, uh, I was like, so you Wisconsin people, you know, Wisconsinites, I guess they call yeah. them. Um, it's better than Wisconsinians. Yeah. Well, yeah well, I didn't know what to call them. Uh, so I guess I guessed it right. But so I was like, y'all are used to this, right? I mean, y'all are used to the winners and and they're like, no, we still hate it. <laughs> I was like, okay, all right. Do you have a car? Yeah, yeah. I actually you, bought a Subaru a, before I moved. Do you have a there. heater to like in? Because the all kidding aside, mm-hmm. you can get a little heater installed in your engine block. And yeah, then if, and if you're different locations, you can plug in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 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 Subarus have those uh, uh, aluminum uh, engines that heat okay. really quickly. Okay, um, for that reason. And of course, you know the all-wheel drive. So I all had to, right. okay. I had to, well, I had to get like ready. Looks like you're you're putting some thought into it. Oh yeah, I'm prepared. I think <laughs> I've got my parka and hats and boots and all this stuff, so I'm ready to go. So how much interaction have you had with Doctor Orlov? Oh, a ton. I'm yeah, I love. Yeah, well, he has, <laughs> Andre Orlov has to is the be best fun, man. Yeah. We have so much fun. Like we, w- he took me to this uh, his favorite like uh, Indian uh, buffet, mm-hmm. and we just. Started well, talking, okay, and then you, two and a half hours you, you later. You had me at Indian and Buffet. I'm so. telling you. Oh, my gosh. Come to Marquette, and I we'll could, go. Yeah, I could take an enemy there and still enjoy myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you have no enemy in Andre. Um, but, no, he's incredible. Um, we've had some really great conversations, and we email back and forth all the time. And he's been on sabbatical uh, this semester, mm-hmm. so he comes back next semester. And then, hopefully, I'll be his TA next sure. semester. Um and uh, I'll be helping him edit uh, his next book okay, uh, with, coming out. Without incriminating it, a- anyone, mm-hmm. uh, your reaction, response to the teaching experience. Oh, yeah, my first lecturing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it was really great, actually. Okay. I had a really great experience. Um, I, I sort of was thrown off into the deep end, you know. So uh, at Marquette, they're required undergrads, uh, since it's a Jesuit school, the undergrads are required to take intro to theology. Mm-hmm. And so um, 
Mark Johnson, who I TA for, is a theology prof there. He's an Aquinas guy. And I was really scared about that when they assigned me to him because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know anything about Aquinas. So this is not a good fit. Right. Um, but they're like, no, don't worry. Don't worry. He's teaching intro classes. I was like, okay, phew. So um, I was like, I don't have to read Thomas Aquinas. That's great. I'm sure yeah, you, I will you don't, you don't have to read the whole sumo while you're yeah, I'm not going to read the whole sumo. <laughs> I'm just not, it's not going to happen. Um, but no, so, I, so he has three intro, uh, to theology classes in a row and, um, from like nine thirty AM to like one forty five or something. And so, you know, I thought I was just going to be totally exhausted and, and cause I taught all three in a row. And, and, uh, so he, the week, the week that I taught was we were going through gospel of John. Do you do like so, discussions? You know, or, um, or well, I do or? sort of, op- yeah, I lecture. Okay. And then throughout it, I'll have some sort of open-ended questions to try mm-hmm. to stir the pot a little bit. Um, but they, they just didn't bite a whole lot, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's hard to get them to talk. Are I'm like, are you guys freshmen? awake? Yeah, like, but, yeah. Freshman and sophomore. Okay, but well, you know me, yeah. I, you know, I'm but pretty know, jovial. That's, like, that's your answer though. Yeah. But freshman and sophomore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 they're immune to that. Yeah, they are. <laughs> now it's cool though, because I did get some, you know, gaping mouths and wide eyes and stuff once we got towards the end, uh, mm-hmm. and connecting some stuff that I showed them in the beginning. So all the intertextual stuff, you know, that they wouldn't know those words, but right. you know, the bringing the themes out in John and, uh, like the Akeda, the binding of Isaac mm-hmm. in the, in the crucifixion, you know, why is Jesus bound? Why is he carrying his cross? This isn't in any of the gospels, you know, what's going on here. Yeah. And so, Looking at stuff like that, you know, Jesus has the new temple. Um, Jesus is the, the man, the human one, you know, the gardener, um, yeah. picking up on all these Adamic themes, you know, Adam. So the, they were, they got really excited once I started making those connections. Cause a lot of the kids had sort of grown up in sure. Catholic school and stuff. So sure. they had a lot of exposure to scripture, but just never studied it. Um, you know, probably just in catechesis or whatever, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's really cool to sort of blow the lids off for them. I had some students that stayed after that were like, man, we heard this lamb of God all the time in the liturgy all the time. We had no idea what it meant. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you, you do now. Well, well, that's good. <laughs> so it, that, that was cool. You know, it was a really cool experience. And I like being at Marquette because, you know, you have a lot of privileged, you know, kids who just were kind of spoiled and didn't realize that all this stuff is there. They've never studied it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so to try to break the lid off and show them some of it was, was cool, you know, and you know, you always have students that couldn't care less, you know, but, but I, so you try to get them all involved and realistically, I can't do much teaching there. I mean, we're just too busy. So, and, uh, Dr. Johnson has been incredible about, you know, realizing you know how much work i have to do and not burdening burdening me with a mm-hmm. lot so and marquette's really great about that i mean they really take so, care of their doctoral students so when you when orlov comes back and you'll be the the ta that's just primarily going to be we're hoping ed- that's the case yeah the editing task or if, yeah if, if i think it works out that's pretty much yeah that's like, pretty much my task okay. yeah so and we've talked about it in the theme of the book and stuff and what, what's it on uh we'll keep do we want to keep that under wraps right now because okay, right. i haven't okay. talked to him about that all right yeah. I, I have a related... so i don't want to share it if he hasn't right. shared it and, himself and, and so. my next question is is not <clears throat> because i have any knowledge of the book because mm-hmm. i don't yeah yeah but i'm i'm planning on going to the enoch seminar Saturday oh, yeah, night. Yeah. have you ever been to it that's first question and if you have or I have to think Orlov is going to be at this thing. Of course, yeah. So I, I'm hoping it's more than just like wine and cheese kind of stuff and chit chat. They're actually going to talk about research projects, correct? Well, aren't they doing a, well, a thing for the Feshrif for Michael Stone? I, I don't know. It, it just the description I saw said that they're going to be talking about new directions and Enoch research or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's I, a Saturday night reception. Honestly, I haven't. I mean, I saw the Enoch seminar yeah. stuff but I didn't look at all the It just said everybody's welcome topics. and so on and so forth. So I, I'm thinking, yeah, I'd like to sit in on that. Oh, I would love to be there. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go. Uh, I, I'll, I'll uh, email uh, Dr. Orlov and see. Yeah. I, I um, just, I mean, I've been to receptions before. At he SBL, probably knows what's going on. And it's, and it's, they, they turn into business meetings real fast, and, you know, so I don't, that, I'm not really up for that. You know, even if the food's good. Well, you just go for the, for the drinks and the food. I mean, you no, know, I, I'm, 
I want to hear about Enoch stuff. That, that's yeah, I mean that about. that's I was really excited that the Enoch seminar thing is is overlapping with SPL stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't know they were even doing that until yesterday. I think my buddy Rob Casho from Brown University posted that he was in a session at Harvard on it, and I was like, man, I want to be there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, right, I want to well, try that, to I want to try sounds, to go. Yeah, that sounds encouraging. Then. And I've told Doctor Orlov, I you know that's that's a goal of mine. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, in the future is. You know, I, I don't know. I think you have to have your PhD before you can yeah, I don't know. It uh, just, be a member of Enoch Seminar. It but, just said all are welcome. So I, I figured. But I want to be involved but, with it right, in the future. Right. You but know? They, they, they could have just said that with that assumption. You know, right. Because right. It's, it's here at SBL. So we'll, we'll see. We'll find out. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, okay. Do you have any, um, any, are you angling for anything specific as far as a dissertation? Do you, oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you, you yeah. narrow to one thing or you're, you're, well, I mean, it's, it's the trajectory we've dealt with. Okay. I mean, the, the so yeah, the, the listen, yeah. So a lot of the listeners who heard the, uh, resurrection, death of the gods and my stuff on Romans four, mm-hmm. um, these are all pieces to the puzzle. So, mm-hmm. but I think the Roman, I think the first Corinthians 15, cause I've done more research on it since I presented last year on that paper. I've had a lot of emails about it, a lot of, uh, messages and conversations about it from other scholars who, uh, sort of, huh, I never thought of that, you know, and, and, uh, and after being cited in Thiessen's book, um, I, I actually got in some interesting conversations, uh, with, uh, some other scholars about this project. So, um, that's going to be a big portion. I think it's going to be a big chapter in my mm-hmm. dissertation. Did uh, you, that topic? Did that, you ever have a follow-up conversation with the guy at, um, uh, it was last year, it was, it was, I think it was in the same section you spoke in, but I'm trying to remember who was Litwa. Okay. Oh, David Litwa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then there was, there was there, in, in part of the Q and a, uh, you either, it was either your paper that you said something and this guy heard it, or it was a Q and a where there was some interaction. There was a guy from Harvard there that came up to you afterwards and said, I think hey, he was from Yale. He was or, from Yale. Okay. Cause yeah, like, yeah. this will really help what I'm doing. Did you ever? Christopher. Yeah. We actually, that's weird. You brought that up because we literally just ran into each other. <laughs> okay. So he was coming back from getting his name tag and I just went and got mine. And, uh, he was like, David, David. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, Christopher, what's up? And so we stopped and talked for a little bit and okay. he, congratulations to Christopher, by the way, he got a tenure track uh, job at Cornell college. Oh. Um, so congratulations to him. Um, he's out of the job, the job market. The job market finally, yeah, well, that's a he's like, I can actually enjoy SBL now instead of just posturing the whole time. You know? Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's great. So, um, I'm very excited for him, but yeah, he, he had, I told him he was a big encouragement to me because, uh, especially coming from Yale, um, telling me that, you know, I was connecting dots of how these texts are being used by Paul here in ways that he could never sort of figure out how to, mm-hmm. it all fits together. Yeah. He was like, really excited last year. Yeah. He got yeah. really excited and it got me more excited because wow, someone's seeing this, you know, and I'm still trying to convince Dr. Cover, um, at Marquette about it. Uh, I think he's slowly, What's his first name, Michael Cover. Okay. Michael right. Cover. I knew another Cover, but go ahead. Yeah. He is, he's as sharp as sharp gets, man. He is, <laughs> It's real. I'm serious. So what? So I, what, I can't what, speak highly enough. Of what? What's Dr. the Cover. obstacle? I mean, what? Um, I think he, he. Well, we. To be fair, we've only talked about the you know the Deuteronomy four sort of background yeah. to the creature list there yeah. in First Corinthians fifteen. We talked about that the last time we sat down, and he he kept going that well, this is clearly Genesis. I mean, this is creation stuff. This is Adam, and I, and I said, well, Deuteronomy is also sort of creation. I, and we talked about. Uh, overlapping creation and Exodus. And he wasn't buying that too quickly. He's like, yeah, you may be trying to put an unnecessary layer in there. That's not there. And, right. and but I, but he hasn't heard the whole argument mm-hmm. and, and he's for, forgotten more than I'll ever learn probably. So uh, <laughs> to, you know, to have this little peon, you know, discussing this with him. No. Um, but he's so, he's so kind. Um, he's so thoughtful. He's so nuanced it, and he really is a joy, uh, to have there on the third floor in Marquette hall because, um, his schedule's crazy and he has a family and he still makes time for mm-hmm. us, you know? And so uh, he's a virtuous man. He's a priest. He's a priest in the Anglican communion, uh, from Dallas area. Actually, mm. his dad taught at DTS. Actually, Wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Wow. So, so the, see the other co- cover I know is Robin who had a PhD from Harvard. Mm. He was an ancient Eastern studies guy, but he, and he taught at Dallas for a while. 
That's his dad. Okay, so where's his dad? That's at Michael now? Cover's dad. Wow. Okay, so where's his dad at now? Uh, I, I I don't know. We haven't talked about it. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. He he had parted ways with DTS back right. A long right. Time ago. It was in the yeah. late eighties or early nineties. Yeah. 90s, yeah. But was he was there when I was there, but I never got to take a class from him. So I was yeah. Yeah, that's okay, that's, that's literally guy. his son. Wow, boy. And I mean, he's got pedigree of pedigrees. I mean, the guy is. Uh, it's that, like, now I'm feeling a little bit old. <laughs> I, well, yeah, it's Yale. No, uh, yeah, I think it's Yale, Harvard, Notre Dame is his pedigree. You know, okay. and and he he was a Lilly Fellow. You know, uh, he he won the Ackmeyer Award at SBL for New Testament. I I, I lucked out big time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, being there with him oh, and that's, that's our really faculty at Marquette is is outstanding. I mean. Uh, it is a place to study Second Temple and Christian origins, and it is man, it's the spot. Yeah, well, I was I was hoping you'd get in there, as as you know, obviously. Yeah, you know that was my first choice. Yeah, so yeah, well, that's so crazy. I was very I was very happy, and it's really it, I really have a lot of thanks goes out to Andre Orloff because we really connected uh, last year at SBL, and and he was really digging my research proposal, and we hit it off, and it was like sort of a peas in a pod type situation yeah. you know yeah so for this year uh last question anyway, i know you're you you got the tuesday morning slot yes and i, and I have, I been have there the before. worst slot of sbl well, but, I but know. there's two ways to look at that. the last slot there's two ways to look at that that there are fewer papers okay so that means if you're staying there are fewer options right so you might actually get a full room I mean, when I I read a paper uh, on Tuesday morning, not once. sure if I want full room. <laughs> it's like this paper's more chill than my last one, or or it's like half the people there just well, this sounded better than the other thing. I don't really know yeah. what either one was about. We well, no, I mean, I joke about it, but we actually have a really good session. I mean, the whole session is on Second uh -huh. Corinthians twelve on the ascent to heaven. Yeah, well, see, you know, and, if if you're staying and you're even if you're just broadly New Testament, you're, right. you're going to have people wind up in that. So, so if you're interested in New Testament or Paul or apocalypse apocalyptic or second temple or ascents and visions and all that stuff or apocalyptic epistemology that's the spot that's mm -hmm. like a okay. great section to be in. is is there this will be the last question then yeah, is sure. there a a paper that you're angling to here one in particular can you pull one out of your head like oh that's i saw tough. this i saw this and i can't wait to go yeah that's tough so, there, have... so there's no like paper like uh Watchers and bastard spirits and glaciers. <laughs> Tyler Stewart, yeah, right. <laughs> fellow Marquette man. Right. You know? as, as soon as we saw that, it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's uh, uh, yeah, more Marquette connection there. Um, mm. no, no, I, not Nothing not that not of that, that good. <laughs> not not of that caliber. I think. No, I I really really like Tyler Stewart's work. I mean, he's he's incredibly intelligent and he's a good man too. Um, uh, yeah, I I don't really n not nothing that just like screams out like right. in our sort right. of wheelhouses um but but there are quite a few papers um that i am interested in it's just there's too many right now to sort of rattle off yeah there's one on on giborim in uh septuagint and i don't know i can't remember what the title what of section was. is that in i don't even know if i, I, saw I that. don't know I, i'd have to look at my schedule but i have i have maybe four or five that i have written down that i'd really mm. like to get to um including the enoch seminar but yeah, I, I know. I just was wondering if there was something that maybe I missed. <laughs> and if yeah. you brought it up, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm still like frazzled from all my work. Like the, this is the first break I've had was my plane ride here. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. no, I, <laughs> so I'm, I know. So I, you I know. know, I'll sit down and actually go over my schedule tonight, and what I'm actually doing. So, <laughs> OK, so. well, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. Always. Well, we're here at SBL in Boston now, uh, and our first interview is with Marina Westerdahl, and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself. Uh, we've known each other for a couple of years, but it's better coming from you to tell the story. I'm sure. So um, I'm Marina. I'm uh, or originally from Argentina, and uh, I've been, I came when I was 12. i um, been married about 18 years, have two kids. And um, I originally uh, decided to go to seminary uh, about five and a half, six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I'd been a stay-at-home mom. I'd run my own business. And uh, I just, since I was very young, I just loved studying, studying scripture, mm -hmm. reading books. And I was very involved in ministry. And the there was an opportunity to um, go to a local 
uh, seminary, Knox Theological Seminary. Mm -hmm. So um, that was the beginning of my journey. Yeah, and, and that's that's where we met mm -hmm. at Knox. Yes. So I did a uh, an, an interterm course. I don't even remember what it was called, but I know we we something went through spiritual theology. Yeah, or, something like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Sam Lamerson is the uh, yes. the president there. He gave it a title, and I said I would come and. And we wound up going through a lot of, you know, the, the kind of content mm -hmm. that's in Unseen Realm, Divine Council stuff. Yes. So let's just talk about that. What was what was your experience in that? Well, I it was really providential when you came. I was mm -hmm. um, I had been reading some of your work. Mm -hmm. I'd been taking um, quite a heavy course load. I was taking a class on Ephesians, a class on um, John Calvin, uh, Old Testament, mm -hmm. and um, and and. What happened was I was reading a lot through all those three classes were taking me to Deuteronomy. And uh, I remember reading through the, the song of Moses, mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 32. And the experience that I had, which was uh, amazing. It, and I, I know you mentioned you had a similar experience with Psalm 82. Mm -hmm. But I was reading through Deuteronomy and verse 8 and 9 just uh jumped off the page right i had it's I, good you were reading some were you reading esv the, the ESV, <laughs> yes yeah, and, good, and, good and you the first that one the first thing i did was compare i went open my niv my nasb and the king james and they all had a different translation which right. i would have totally missed right so i know that was uh providential and um i mean i'd grown up in church i read my bible i had never seen those sure. two verses so um when what happened was that I I couldn't get over what those um what the verse said yeah. about God dividing the nations of the earth according to the number of the sons of God, and so I had so many questions, and I decided to do my paper in Old Testament um, on the different um, the, the divergent translations from the Masoretic, the Septuagint, mm -hmm. the Qumran scrolls, and uh, so that led me to your work. Well, so yeah, the, I, I started the, the doing the Sack article. You probably, yes, you probably I was doing online that. research, yeah. and I was, you know, your name was coming up, and so I was reading um, anything that I could find that you'd written on that topic, and um, and then, so this was fall semester right. of 2015, right? And I find out in January that hey, Dr. Heiser is coming to teach. <laughs> I was like, what? That must mean something. <laughs> yes, I was like, wow, he's coming for, to teach me. So. Um, I was, it was really exciting. So Yeah. Well, it was yeah. fun. We, we had a good time. You know, there, there was a, I don't know, it was a small number as inner terms class. usually are, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. There were good questions. Yeah. Uh, covered a lot of ground in just a few days. Yeah. Oh, it blew my mind. Yeah, there was it, so much I'd never seen or even thought about. So. Yeah. Well, you had, you had my 15 years sort of scrunched into what, yeah. you know, a week three and a half or three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, that's, you know, I hadn't heard the, some of the details of that story, mm -hmm. but that's pretty neat. Yeah. So you're in this program, you take the, the course, um, mm -hmm. and you complete whatever program you're in. What, what it was, was the it? Master's in Biblical and Theological Studies. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you decide you want more punishment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so tell us about that. Well, um, I had not considered doing Doctor of Work. Um, I was just going to go get my master's and, you know, join a ministry and, and be a mom. And, and I, I fell in love with, uh, with research. Mm -hmm. I really did. And this topic of who are the sons of God, um, it just led me to a whole new world of, of this underlying um, theology that's in scripture that I had missed my mm -hmm. whole life. Um, and re and rereading not just the Old Testament but the New Testament. I mean, Paul's theology about the powers and principalities. Mm -hmm. oh, that was another class I was taking at that time was in Ephesians, wow, yeah. powers and principalities. So I began to ask myself, well, Paul didn't have a New Testament. Where did he get the powers and principalities concept? Those terms, mm -hmm. obviously, it was the Old Testament. So I began to go back, and then, you know, is there a link between these? So that um, just just wanting to continue learning and finding not just um, the biblical studies aspect, but what theological implications are there mm -hmm. um, of these sons of God, and I, I think there's there's many. Mm -hmm. I haven't obviously I haven't started my doctorate work yet, but um, the more I read, 
and the more I think of this topic, I realize that even in the in the eschatological terms, sure. that um, in the fact that it has that Jesus didn't come just for a forgiveness of sins. There's the cosmic reason. There's mm-hmm. so all of Paul's theology came alive even more by understanding a little more of who of the identity of these sons of God. Yeah, so. yeah, we were talking. In, I mean, it was mentioned in earlier interviews that we did. Um, again, podcast listeners have heard bits and pieces of that, but yeah, you know, like when Paul talks about the resurrection, we yeah. typically think of, oh, I get a new body. Yeah. Oh, that'd be neat. Yeah. But again, five or six times he feels sort of compelled by something. When he thinks of the, th- the, the thought of the resurrection, his mind goes to, again, the the defeat, the delegitimization of the, the powers, the authorities, yeah. the rulers. Yes. Like, why does he make that, that those, why does he connect those two things? Because yeah. you never hear it that way. Right. But again, if he might have done it once, okay, he sort of had a bad day or he you know, wanted, wanted to vary the mm-hmm. message. But again, half a dozen times he thinks of A and then B is this, you know, this, this sons of God stuff. Right. So why, you know, why is that? Where does that come from? So it, it's, you, you get these connection points again mm-hmm. all over the place that you don't expect to find them and you'd never see them unless you have, again, sort of the matrix in your head. You yeah. kind of know what you're looking for. Right. Now, again, I, I know you're trying to work out the details of your doctoral study, mm-hmm. applications, interviews, yes. all that stuff. Yes. What are your research interests? Have you, and it's, it's early, so it you don't really early. have to have a topic, but mm-hmm. you've got to be thinking about a couple of things. Well, definitely interested in, um, not just the identity, but the theological implications. So I would like to do some work between both the Old and the New Testaments. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at uh, right now of having a Old Testament supervisor and a uh, New Testament supervisor. But it's also important to um, the, the New Testament supervisor and the Old Testament supervisor have experience in the intertestamental mm-hmm. writings and mm-hmm. literature because there seems to be a progression of terms that there's there's a link there mm-hmm. in the language and so I, I that's sort of what i would like to study mm-hmm. um it's not clear right um, but you're i mean what what you're doing and i'm just going to point this out mm-hmm. for our listeners what you're doing is, is smart mm-hmm. because you just mentioned well hey it's important that my advisors you know have some cross fertilization right. here you know right. where where chances are reasonable that yeah not just maybe one person on your committee, but a few of them you know, have run into this material. Yeah. Um, I mention that because, I mean, you can talk to a lot of New Testament professors, for instance, about, oh, divine counsel stuff. How does that bleed over the New Testament? And they have no idea what you're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. And it doesn't mean they're dumb. I mean, they have PhDs. Mm-hmm. They're, they have, you know, they're good thinkers. They're good researchers. But, you know, when you get to doctoral work, it's, it really, you can really fall victim to tunnel vision, yeah. you know, where you get funneled into one, you know, little area, mm-hmm. uh, whether you're interested or not, or whether you sort of feel, well, I got to do this, you know, to, to have a dissertation topic that so-and-so can supervise. Right. And, you know, you, there are a lot of people who go through that and they never, um, they're never exposed to wider, you know, thinking, you know, mm-hmm. wider topic areas. And they literally can get a PhD and teach 10, 15, 20 years somewhere and have never heard of this. Yeah. Uh, I've had a New Testament professor once email me about um, the citation in Hebrews. Um, you know, that that again, if you're into Hebrews, you sort of know that there's there's a reference to the gods, mm-hmm. okay, in Hebrews one, but it doesn't come from the Masoretic text, and and even in the Septuagint, you know, it's it's a little fuzzy. And so I this this guy who's a real he's a seasoned New Testament scholar emailed me one day and said. You know, I know this is in the Qumran stuff, and yet, you know, Deuteronomy thirty-two. <laughs> yeah. There's something going on uh-huh. there, and, and uh, this looks like the this where the citation comes from. You know, uh-huh. that writer of Hebrews was thinking of. Does this have anything to do with that divine council stuff? Yeah. You work on? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, uh-huh. you know, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, he had never really hit it mm-hmm. and thought about it. Yeah. So for you to be thinking ahead. And again, like, hey, it'd be nice to have someone who sort of knows what I'm talking about, right. like, like knows what I'm, what right. I, I want to think about. That's really wise. Thank so, you. what's been your experience since you've, again, had your cage rattled? <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> How about your experience talking to, you know, friends, other believers? You know, the the home Bible study thing, church. 
Well, have, have, have you have you tried? Have you dared to bring any of this? Up? What's I happening? get looks when I do bring up, right. um, in especially at church. Uh, I've discussed, it, of course, with family members and friends, and um, there's a certain. It's almost like you can only share a certain amount, maybe. Mm-hmm. And but at church, especially, they might look at me like, "Wow, you know what." The the main thing what is happened to you? what <laughs> yes and and the one thing that which was my question was well what about the Shema what about the oneness sure. of God are you are you talking about other gods that makes people very nervous especially in um, Christian circles mm-hmm. so um so I I found that I have to be careful in what I say and and realize that perhaps not everybody gets as excited about this mm-hmm. as I do or or so. is even really ready because you right. could. You know, it. I, I'm sure you have the feeling, you know, like I do so many times. It's well, I'd love to answer that question, but I have we have to talk about these ten other things first <laughs> before yeah. the answer would make any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or so that you're not troubled by the answer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you 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 get into that. Um, have I assume you haven't been written out of anybody's will? I or, know. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still at the church you were you were at. Before you started all this? And... Well, that's another story. Oh, okay. There's some changes there, but it's okay. for different reasons. All right. Well, so, well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, it, just so that you didn't sort of get drummed out or no, anything. No, 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 no. But, but I have, you know, had to with this, I, I have to realize that it, t- it took me a long time. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see it. And I do see what happened as very, I mean, I had been in seminary for two and a half years mm-hmm. already. And I had never noticed I had never had a professor even mention this. Mm-hmm. So um, so that kind of helps me realize that I, ha- I have to be patient and many people may not be interested. And it's okay. They can still be good mm-hmm. Christians sure, and, absolutely. And, and not go into this death. Now, for me, I find it fascinating and I want to keep learning about it and continue and, and finding perhaps theological implications for mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And what I love um, in, in some of the interviews that you did with um, Fern and Audrey mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is that those that, that's the practical outcome mm-hmm. of this very uh, wonderful and deep teaching. So um, I think that there is perhaps thinking long term, there are practical outcomes mm-hmm. to pursuing new knowledge in this theology. So, What would you say, again... Naked Bible podcast mm-hmm. audience has a lot of homeschool moms in it. Really, I didn't know. <laughs> a lot of a lot of moms, just generally. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, we. It's it's kind of amazing as we travel. You know, Trey and I, and you know, just even you know by myself as well. You you get to meet people and you and you hear that they listen to the podcast, mm-hmm. but the the variety is just cr- kind of crazy. Yeah. Like we were. I was at a conference two weeks ago and I'm talking to somebody in the hallway and then somebody walks by and then just stops and looks and, and recognizes me, I guess, from the web mm-hmm. website. Yeah. And he's from London. Oh. So then that guy goes yeah. away and then we resume our conversation and it happened again. And that guy's from Norway. <laughs> oh. So it, oh, that's it, awesome. Yeah. It's just really, yeah. and even, you know, being at the, uh, you know, just, we were doing some interviews last night after we were done, somebody um, you know, stops and says, Hey, you know, I, I'm at this you know, such and such institution and, you know, my students, you know, love your podcast. I listen to it too. And, you know, we read the books and, and, you know, North Carolina, I mean, just all over the United States. Um, wow. it, it's really kind of yeah. amazing, you know, yeah. the, the reach. I mean, you, you, we all know what the internet is, but until mm-hmm. you're, you're sort of actually doing something that, you know, involves the internet and people mm-hmm. actually you know, oh yeah, my hu- my it. husband listens to your podcast, right. and many times he's like, "Oh, I was on my way to work." You know, guess what Pizer said? <laughs> <laughs> what did he do now? Yeah. <laughs> but what would you say yeah. again to to somebody you know like yourself? Mm-hmm. You know, they're you know whatever you know station of life, and mm-hmm. they're thinking about okay, you know, maybe now or maybe a few years down the road, I want to throw my hat in the ring. I want to actually get formal education or take mm-hmm. courses. I mean. What would you say to them? I, I assume your experience, you know, overall has been a good one. Yeah, absolutely. So how would you advise someone? What so are the do's, the don'ts? Someone interested in seminary so, training? Someone interested in seminary, yeah. Well, um, I always say this, that you get through seminary on your knees. Mm-hmm. Um, 
for me, it's been so much prayer. Um, when I began, the types of books that I was reading, um, I mean, uh, oh, yeah, Bob that, Inc. Right, that would be quite different. Right. Yeah. Um, I'd always been a reader, but the level of, um, of reading, the amount of reading, um, it was it was overwhelming. So there's an adjustment period. Mm -hmm. um, be patient with yourself. Only take one, two classes at a time if that's all you can handle. Mm -hmm. And um, and and just approach scripture with a posture of humility, and realize that there's so much you don't know. Right. Yeah. That that's really important. So, yeah, absolutely. And you're going to find that out going through your doctoral work. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, a lot of people have the impression that people with PhDs, you know, sort of, and, and you know, you'll you'll meet these types, but. Anybody with a PhD sort of thinks they know everything. I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. That's actually very contrary yeah. to most of my experience. Right. Uh, again, you will meet those people that sort of give you that impression. Yeah. But overwhelmingly, it's the, they just get it. Yeah. I know a lot about this one area because, okay, it's within it's under the umbrella of Old Testament. And I know a lot of this because it was my dissertation. And I had to read this, that, and the other thing, and you know, basically try to cover everything that's been written on that, and that that consumed my life for five, six, seven years. So that's yeah. really what I know. Yeah. But again, if they, you know, sort of step back and and look at that, it's like, yeah, that that's what I know. But this yeah. other stuff over here, I, you know, I'm going to be real careful. Yeah. You know what I say, and and so a lot of the PhDs I know are very cognizant mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. And so that that's good advice. Um Yeah. It it's almost like I, I hate to say it this way, but you I think you run into more of that when you have people who sort of know enough not to be dangerous, but but know enough to know that they know more than the people they're ministering to. Right. And and again, part of there there's there's a there's an arrogance problem mm -hmm. there. There's a little bit of a of a pride problem. Yeah. But they're also sort of taught to think that way are kind of victimized because their people expect them to be the answer person. Mm, and then yeah. if, you know, as you, you, you get four or five years of that right. and you wonder, well, you know, if I don't know, can I fake my way through it? Because right. I want, I don't want to create the impression that I'm, you know, that I don't know things. Right. It's better, it's better to say, you know what? I don't yeah, know. I'm not an is. expert in right this up field. Front. And that to me, that's, that's actually, I think higher, higher of that person. Mm -hmm. I think highly of that person that will say, you know, I, and and it's true. I mean, um, you can only zero in on a specific area mm -hmm. because we don't have infinite intellect and time, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. That's... How did your seminary time uh, affect your kids at all? Were well, they encouraging? Uh, Were they sort of ambivalent? Or You know, I studied. I took um, all my classes basically during the day while they were at school. Mm -hmm. My daughter just started ninth grade and my son just started seventh grade. So when, when I started seminary about five and a half, six years ago, um, they were little, but they mm -hmm. were in school and um, they were okay. But I realized that as, as, um, as time went by, that it was actually a really positive thing because my daughter, um, for one class, for speech class, she actually talked about, you know, she had to choose, you know, my son picked my husband and so my daughter mm -hmm. picked me. So she did a, you know... I look up to my mom because, you know, she studies and she's learning, you know, different languages. Sure. And so I realized that as, as it actually, it helped inspire my kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there, there may have been times maybe where, you know, mommy has to study or write a paper. So we're not going to go here or there, but overall it's been, it's been very good, very positive. Well, it's good to get them young. When you said in inspire the kids, I, I thought yeah. of my, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to not name this person because mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they may be listening, <laughs> well, but I, I know someone who, to, who went to school, uh, didn't need the degree, but went to school to try to motivate mm -hmm. their kid. Oh, and, and like, like, I'm going to take the same like courses but and, and wait, the degree. They went with their kids. Well, they didn't, they weren't always in the, mm -hmm. the but they took the same program uh -huh. Yeah, thinking, well, you know, if, if dad's in there doing it, that's going to motivate uh -huh. them to put a little fire under the, under didn't work. <laughs> didn't work at all. Uh -huh. You know, it, it was like the, the the kid would look at him and like, I don't know why you're doing this. <laughs> and then and then uh, uh -huh. again, the, the the fellow I know, he wouldn't quit either. So wow. when it, when he realized this isn't working, uh -huh. it, it's not like, oh well, I tried that. Yeah, yeah. And I can walk away. I actually went through the whole 
degree program and, and didn't need the degree because he already had a, a good job in something else. Uh-huh. But yeah, oh, it, it was, and again, yeah. I'm, this is somebody in, in my wider you know family. Mm-hmm. So I would hear the details of, of this struggle and I'm, why don't you just drop out? Yep. I mean, so you don't what was need the degree this. In? It was like computer science or something. Oh, wow. So it's and, and didn't know anything. Yeah. He, I mean, he would tell me, no, I'm, I'm going in, I'm sitting there and we're having a test. And before I can even read the instructions, I hear, you know, like <laughs> these younger kids just <laughs> typing out this code and, and you know, thinking like, uh-huh. I, I, I can't keep up. Yeah. But he wouldn't quit. Wow. Um, but it didn't work. <laughs> the end of the story is it didn't work. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, I don't know. Maybe. It, I mean, did 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 his kid continue in school? It, well, he he did continue. Well, that's good. And he finished a, a few like I don't know two two years or so later. Mm-hmm. But it it didn't it didn't propel him. Mm-hmm. You know, like to work harder in class or take more classes yeah. or get out sooner. Yeah. It almost had zero effect. Maybe comic effect. I don't know. But I don't wow. Know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks sure. for spending a little time with us yeah, um, just to hear pleasure. your story. And, and again, I hope it does inspire some, you know, out in the audience. Cause I, I do get a lot of inquiries about, mm-hmm. should I take classes? Oh, you know, it, and yeah. most of, a lot of it is like language stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, people want to learn how to, you know, handle languages, mm-hmm. but should I go to school? I'm thinking about going to seminary, you know, what yeah. should I be looking out for? You know, and you have your, your sort of, your normal obstacles, mm-hmm. you know, the time, the expense right. and all that. But there are these intangibles too. Yeah. You know, if you really you know, feel driven yeah. and, you know, you can see, you know, the use of it at the, at the other end, it's like, well, you know, if you're convinced the Lord wants you to do that, then that's what you need to yeah. do. So. And, and, and my advice would be like, for me at the time, I was really interested in uh, apologetics. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, leading Bible studies uh, for believers and non-believers so that's what interested me. And um, and Knox happened to be offering a class taught by Dr. Lamerson in apologetics mm-hmm. in the mornings. So even though I was scared to go to seminary, um, <laughs> it was, I was very nervous, yeah. to be honest. I actually fought it for a couple of years. I thought, okay, well. So that was your first class? The one class that was available okay. in the mornings was apologetics. Okay. So I signed up and um, I realized, wow, I... I actually maybe can do right. this. You can do this. And, and, and then it, after it's that, good to open with Sam too. Yes. Oh yeah. He's yeah. a great teacher. So after that, I was, I was hooked. So don't overthink it. Um, don't, don't try to take all these hard classes mm-hmm. right away. Just kind of yeah, get your feet wet. Yep. Yeah. So that would be right. my advice. That's good. So. Well, thanks again. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you for having me. You bet. Well, we're back at SBL, and we have a familiar name with us, at least to our audience, Sam Lamerson. Uh, we talked to Sam a little bit last year, and so it's nice to get a little bit of an update. So, Sam, uh, please introduce yourself for anybody new. Hi, I'm Sam Lamerson. I teach at Knox Theological Seminary in Fort Lauderdale. Mike and I have been talking about UFOs and Bigfoot for a long time. <laughs> yeah, we do that here at SBL, too. <laughs> That's pretty much why I come. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you, you want to you want to ferret out all the abductees, right? Exactly. Yeah, I'm but, still looking. Well, well, believe it or not, I've had I've had scholars at this meeting come up to me and say, "I I want to tell you my story because really? I know you won't out me." I've actually really? had that happen here. Yeah, I've had it happen in other places, but never here. Yeah. Um, well, since since you jumped right into that, you've been doing something interesting in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Like, is it is it? At your church or it's, through your church yeah, or something it's, it's peripheral? sort of through the seminary. We have this thing called Lunch and Learn where I just pick a topic and speak like every couple of months. So I wanted to do for Halloween something on the Bible and the paranormal. So we talked about ghosts and UFOs. And in, in terms of ghosts, we talked about what happened with Saul and the Witch of Endor. And then with UFOs, I talked a little about what the paranormal world is, how we are, as Christians, we believe in in at least some sort of an invisible realm and that there are evil beings in that invisible or visible realm and that the evil one may be much happier to have us believe in aliens than to have us believe in in evil beings that are really going to harm us. Mm-hmm. So how was that received? How, how many how many came out? Uh, it was a, probably 150 came wow. out, uh, which is we usually have about 30 or 40. So it was many, many more than we had ever had before. And it was... Uh, I, I had a few people come up to me afterwards and want to tell me their story. 
And of course, I, I, uh, there were people who wanted to ask questions. I didn't allow them to ask questions in front of the whole crowd because you never know what could happen there. And I'm, I'm pushing the envelope as it is. I don't want to make things any worse. But it was many, many people said, I, I'm so glad to hear somebody uh, who, who knows what they're talking about speak about these issues because so often it's just ignored by the church. And we know that there's something there, but the church is almost, as you say in your book, it's almost non, it, 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 it's almost materialistic in the way that it looks at the world. We, we almost get to the point where we say, well, yeah, all that stuff about the invisible realm, it's true, but we don't want to really want to talk about that. And that's a very serious problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've had, uh, it's kind of interesting because, I, again, at, at one of these kind of events, you know, I've had uh, professors, you know, from different departments, evangelical schools, you know, come up to me and, and lament, you know, that just exactly what you described. And some of them even went as far to say that this is going to be sort of in the future a confrontational issue, you know, that like, we're going to have sessions on, you know, should we believe this, what the Bible says about this supernatural world or not, you know, and, and which is kind of startling, but you can see it happening with you know, some of the, yeah. you know, like, okay, historical Adam, you know, and these, these kinds of discussions, because this, this one isn't going to be become any less popular and it's so embedded in pop culture. So yeah, I, I could see that happening, which would be both interesting and kind of alarming at the same time, you know, given... Yeah. Evangelical, and I think that some of it is just uh, the average minister is sort of afraid of it. They don't know what to say, so they just kind of let it go. And the so it never makes its way down to the ground level. You know, there are people talking about these things and thinking about these things, but a lot of it never makes its way down to the bottom shelf for people to sort of get the easy cookies and and understand what's really going on. Mm-hmm. So what what uh, sessions were you able to get to so far? Anything that sort of stood out as, boy, that was interesting or that was really helpful or, boy, we needed to hear one on that? I, I went to a session yesterday on apologetics and textual criticism, which was really good in terms of how many, many evangelical apologists misuse the, the statistics of textual criticism, taking them essentially from F.F. F. Bruce's book, which is 75 years old. And they often, even when they update the statistics, they will only update the statistics which are in favor of the Bible. So if F. Bruce says there are 5,000 Greek New Testament manuscripts, they'll update that to nearly 6,000. But they don't update the number of manuscripts that have been found for Josephus or Philo or any other uh, documents like that. And so it's essentially unfair and it does damage to the gospel when other scholars look at that and say, you're just not being truthful with the text here. Yeah, yeah, like different readings. Of course, you're, you're going to get issues of lexicography, you know, with new new uh, Greek manuscripts and other texts. Well, that, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was very, very helpful. I, I went to Greece this summer with Dan Wallace where we prepared some ancient Greek manuscripts for uh, photography. His, his ministry is CSNTM, Center for the Study of New Testament Manuscripts, and they f- try to photograph as many Greek manuscripts as possible. And one of the interesting things that I found was the way that the text is presented to you affects the way that you read it. And so if you see a text without verses, it will affect the way that you read it. And I'm, I'm becoming more and more convinced that the versification of the Bible is one of the worst things that has ever happened to it. Yeah, because you tend to, if it's broken up into verses, you know, it's like you, you pull out one or two, you know, that exactly. these, these are my verses for the day, or yeah. you, you sort of intuitively might assume that, well, this is a thought unit, somewhat right. related, or without maybe any, not related yeah, at all to what exactly. precedes and follows. Yeah, yeah, without any understanding of what the context is, without any understanding of what came before it or what comes after it, and it causes us to read the New Testament and the whole Bible in a way that we would never ever read another book, and that's that's crazy. We would never pick up a John Grisham novel, begin in the middle of it, read a paragraph, and say, "Okay, I'm done for the day." pick it up the next day, turn to another page, and read a sentence and say, okay, that's good for the day. We would say that's a crazy way to read a book. And yet, that's the way that many people read the Bible. Yeah, you wouldn't even do that to like a, you know, a nonfiction book. Like, you know, no. maybe maybe a textbook because they're typically written according to an outline. But if you have a, you know, like a reference book or any sort of standard nonfiction prose, yeah, you wouldn't do that. Right. You would, you would realize that context is king and that if you can't understand what's going on, 
on the whole page or in the whole chapter, then you're probably going to miss what that one sentence means. How about uh, you're you teaching anything anything new, anything old? Or what, what, I'm still teaching, teaching still what? teaching Greek. I uh, love love teaching Greek. It's just a wonderful. Uh, it's the greatest language in the world, and I I love it. I also teach New Testament survey. I haven't taught New Testament survey in a while because of my other things that I'm doing. So I'm really excited about teaching New Testament at Knox Seminary. If you'd like to hear anything that I have to say, just go to knoxseminary.edu, and there are all kinds. That talk I did about ghosts and the Bible, that's up on our website, and there are all kinds of other things up there as well. Yeah, and that's Knox as in K-N-O-X. K-N-O-X, seminary.edu. So what would you recommend um, sort of, you know, for a survey, um, maybe getting into the New Testament, what kind of resource would you recommend? And have you seen anything on the tables here that you might be adopting? There are a lot of interesting things, but one of the things I saw yesterday or the day before was this this reader's Bible. It doesn't have verses and it doesn't have chapters. And so it's interesting in that it doesn't say the Bible on the cover of it. It's the New Testament. And it's it it's essentially the message, the translation, the message broken up with no chapter divisions. So you read the letter to the Ephesians or you read the letter to Philemon as if it's a real letter. And then you can bring people together and say, instead of having a Bible study, let's have a book club. This is the book that we're going to read, and we'll all read it together, and then we'll talk about what it has to say. And I think people are much less afraid of a book club than they are a Bible study. And even seekers might come when you're just saying, look, this is just this is a book. We're going to read it together, and we're not going to condemn anybody. We're just going to read and see what it has to say and see how it speaks to us. Yeah, it, could, it sounds like it would be a good conversation starter again to somebody who's really you know unchurched you know that that's an interesting idea what who, who was the publisher for that i'm sorry off the top of my head i don't remember but maybe i can find it and email it to you and you could put it in here yeah yeah it, it, it'd be interesting to, i mean i'm going to troll all the book tables like i usually do i'm a, i've only hit about maybe 10 percent of them at this point but i'll so many I'll books so that. little time that's the problem here <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, I don't know, dozens and dozens and dozens of publishers here. And I've made the comment before, a lot of people come to this because it's the only time you're going to get a, a discount from some of these high-end yeah, absolutely. You know, places. So this is this is the thing to, to do. Even if you not, never go to the papers, if you it's live in the it. area, yeah, yeah, you know, you pay a, pay a single day fee, you go in and you get books at a discount you'll never see anywhere else. Wow. So what about um, anything personally that, that's sort of newsworthy? Uh, I just had a grand uh, granddaughter, oh, so that's incredible. Her name is Ella Grace, and I'm going to call her L after uh, <laughs> Stranger Things. Uh, um, Does she have any powers? <laughs> uh, she can cry. I know that. That's that's her biggest power right now. I'm still, you know, doing magic here and there, making a few bucks on the side, and uh, making people laugh. So that's yeah. always going well. Yeah, so that this is your first. Grand- this is my first grandchild. Yeah, yeah. L. So. That's exciting. <laughs> We're hoping to get a will next. So right, yeah, there, there you go, or, or a mic, you know. Yeah, I don't know, may, maybe not. One of them. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. I know you have another appointment that you got to get to, and I think he's standing right there to your left. So again, thanks for taking a little time with us. No problem. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. Bye. 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 All right, Mike. Well, I feel for David having to get the uh, <laughs> having the last draw i guess i don't know what you call it but the last talk on tuesday morning hopefully yeah. people will turn out for that yeah that that's when the conference ends and so lots of people are gone but you know like i told him you know i i had that slot once and it worked out really well so uh, you know hopefully it'll, it'll go well for him he'll get a good crowd and maybe get a heckler or two in there too. <laughs> <laughs> well good deal all right michael well, we hope everybody enjoyed it and i want to thank everybody for listening to the naked bible podcast god bless Thanks for listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, visit www.nakedbibleblog.com. To learn more about Dr. Heiser's other websites and blogs, go to www.drmsh.com.